Okay guys, this is Cruiseroy. I just recently picked up a couple of damaged uh, Inspire batteries. This one here does work, but I guess from what the owner says it only charges to about 57% if I remember correctly. And if you look at it, it's getting kind of bloated. I meant to ask him how this happened because I have many chargers and uh, charging stations for the Inspire and I never really get this heavy bloating um, so what I'm thinking I'm gonna just gut them I think the lipo is a junk and I'm gonna disassemble them unsolder the pack throw the pack away safely and just use all the electrical components now uh, this one here again very severely bloated be interesting to see what's going on in there um, this one doesn't turn on at all. It's completely dead. Uh, I'm not even going to try to save the lipos. I think they're junk. Um, I do have a pack hanging around that was off a donor and the cells were still pretty good. So maybe one of these heads I'm going to try to um, I'm going to try to save and put back into a pack because as you all know these batteries are running almost four hundred dollars brand new you can find them used with about fifty or sixty charge cycles on them for a reasonable amount but the reason I want to talk about this is um, is how do you get these apart uh, safely and easily uh, I see a lot of people fighting with these um, so I'll explain a few things. We'll see how it goes. I could screw up too. I could break something on this. But I'll explain a few things. A few things to have around. Uh, if you got credit cards or something, they're, they're like a thin plastic. Those work well. Um, even cardboard would work well, as thin as possible. Um, I had this old school ruler hanging around that's very thin. It's like a Lexan and I even sanded uh, an edge on it so it's like sharp like a knife I mean I really like a knife but it's thin so it can help you get under some of these tabs on here um, you know even a card like this that they give you for the stop you know different stores or whatever they're actually thin enough to uh, work on this and it, and you can have some metal spatulas hanging around. These are for my 3D printers. Um, so let's start with disassembling. Um, the thing you need to know, I've taken a lot of these apart. Don't ever start from the front. The front is where your data probes are and your positive negative. If you start prying here, you're pretty much going to break everything along the line. Your best bet is take this thing apart from the back. It's very, very tight. This has a very tight tolerance going all the way around. So if you put too much pressure, you're bound to crack something. But if you're building a battery for yourself, who cares? Um, so you try to, like the things I talked about, try to get them as thin as possible. All right. So let's get at it. So here's the rear of the battery and also the rear of the drone. Uh, what I would do is take something metal, thinnest putty knife you got, and try to get in here. And if you notice, it goes in very easy, but it's very tight. So what you want to do now, while you got the spatula there, take one of these plastic or credit card plastic you got that you cut into little pieces and like this one too I sanded down so it's pointy so I'm gonna place that I see pointy side down if you can get that in there now with the metal spatula I got the plastic in there okay now the plastics under there but you're not gonna be able to do anything with that and you don't want to pry too much so take the putty knife now and go under the plastic and what you got to do is get it high enough gently above these tabs sorry I put it in the wrong direction tapered edge down like it's a chisel 
So let me put this back under. I'm going to get the plastic tab under here. All right, now we want to go under this. This one here seems to be a little worn out. And like I said, just gently pry it until you can get that in there. And see, I got one that's pretty dull here. Let me grab another one. So first, I'm going to try this bigger one here. Try to start with one of the tabs first. If you take your time, you can pretty much save the whole battery. Bring it back in the camera here. Let me try to flip it. Try different angles. This is like the hardest part to do. Let me grab my rounded spatula. Alright, there it is. What I did is I got this plastic tab between the two little buttons and the holes. It's just that simple. But now, I got a little bulge in action here. And what it does is it puts a lot of pressure on the sides here. So the next thing to do, again, metal spatula. There's a tab here. There's a tab here, there's two tabs here, there's a tab here, a tab here, and of course you got two in the front. But never start in the front. I know you might want to and it seems easier because it'll just pull that way, but let's stay with this right now. So the next thing you want to do is you got this one covered already. We want to start on these two tabs here. And sometimes you can just get see how tight that is now I can't even get the spatula under here but I possibly can get the stiffer putty knife see that went a little easier and what it is is you try to pry while you're separating you try to pry but it won't work because you're on one side but if you can do the same thing let's see I'll take another one of these. Try to get it up underneath. Trying to do this while paying attention to the camera. Once you get them, they're pretty fairly easy. I'm going to have to tape it the right way. Alright, so this is under the plastic now. What I'm going to do is just try to wiggle it. Try to get this in as far that way as I can. Alright, that seems to... If you look at it now, I got a bulge here. I got a bulge here. Now, this one here is going to be mega tight. So we're just working on the three in the back. So let me start with the metal. Now sometimes take your metal spatula and just try to lift. Like pry underneath and lift. Alright, did you see that? It just started to come up. Alright. So that's good. We just got the back corner up. And if you're safe and use a lot of plastic, you won't get these scratch marks that I'm making right now. Like I said, if you're making your own battery, who cares? Now, like I said, these are off right now, but I'm not going to pull these out. I'm going to leave them in here. We have a tab hiding here and a tab hiding here. But don't worry about these right now in the front, all right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to sneak this heavy spatula under here and pop. Did you hear that? It just clicked. So that one's off. I'm going to come over here. 
Now this one's really tight because you're causing a lot of bulging. And boom. Like I said, you didn't have to worry about the front because it peels right off and it flips this way. That's why you never want to pull the front because that's where all your wiring is and you'll rip the wiring, the data cables, everything are up front. So there you go. And like I said, if you're doing this, there's my test spots right there for the TRB. Um, and that'll be, I'm probably going to test this battery to see what's going on. Um, but that's how you get the top off. Alright, tops off. All this stuff is fairly easy. You can actually start, if you look here already, from me putting all the pressure, this is starting to split apart. DJI doesn't use a lot of heavy glues on the Inspire. So if you sit here and you slowly see I already got it pulled apart and you just get in there and you pry a little bit at a time you can save this whole pack you know but there is there's a touch of I don't know if it's super glue or whatever but it does break free I've seen someone use a glue remover and that seemed to work um, but while we're trying to play with that I guess let's see get this out of here there's your power port I mean sometimes you don't need to, if you don't want to break this completely and you want to replace cells you can just push on the bottom all right make sure your wiring safe in here you don't want to break anything but as you spring it open you can start pushing there is like rubber tabs in here and glue, but see this one's bulged. So I'm trying to get by a few other items here. But let me do the whole thing. Might as well. I don't know what I'm hung up on. It's stuck on something. But I'm going to flip it forward like that. And pull it out. And there's the cage cage is secure nothing broken and here's the cell packs like if you I can test all these cells now individually and see what's going on you can peel all this tack paper off if you do it gentle but I can see one it looks to me that only I'm gonna peel this off the bottom but it looks to me if you ever seen a really good pack I don't know what went wrong with this. Maybe the BMS is no good anymore. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It looks like seven of them puffed. So this whole pack's junk. I don't think this is the one that lit up. All right. So I hope that helps someone out getting these pulled apart. I'm going to play with it later. I'm probably going to test it before I even do anything to see what the cells are doing and uh, try to figure out what happened. Like I said, I purchased two of these together as a pair. They're both damaged. They've been nicked. So they got like these dents in them. That's another thing. Watch out how you store these. You even nick these. You wreck the, uh, the thermal plastic over the lipo and it can cause it to leak. And um, so we'll, I'm going to take a look at it later. But let me put that aside for now. Um, just want to show you my box I 3d printed and that's why I kind of look for dead heads on the uh, inspires but let me open this up this is all 3d printed it's a shell that's why the 3d print is going next next to me here what it's doing is making me a PCB board I know any one of them fancy PCB boards with uh, copper and stuff in it but it's just a sheet of plastic to keep all the batteries sorted before I actually wire it up and that'll fit at the top of the battery and it has its own case all right because I, I had a prototype that's why it's in this aqua color but I wanted it in black to match the Inspire um, you're asking what's this for 
All right, let me move a few things out of the way. If you noticed on the side here while we've been playing, this is a Phantom 4 high voltage battery from a Phantom 4. Now there's four of these cells in each Phantom battery. So unfortunately, to make a 12,000 milliamp battery for the Inspire, it takes four Phantom 4 batteries. Now, what I did, I was lucky. The cells were still all good. The plastic on the units were all junk. So I used them, disassembled them, and I've been in the process. That's why they're taped on soldering new tabs on. All right, so I want to get all new tabs on these, but let me show you how this works. You got Phantom 4 batteries, you have a 3D printed box, and this is what we're going to do. You stack two, there's one cell. Stack two more, that's cell number two. Here's another one. Cell number three. All right, see how they fit in there? And that's the reason for the PCB board. So I can tie them all together properly. You have a thing, you, you have a thing going on with series and parallel in here with the batteries. Like this is a six cell Inspire battery, but there's 12 cells. So you're basically doing the same thing with Phantom 4 cells. There's cell number four. Cell number five. And cell number six. Now they tell you, I'm going to check every single cell. I already did, they were all like 4.0. Um, so there's your cell pack right there. Everything gets a PC board, which I'm printing in black. And I opened up the grooves a little bit more, so that was a, this is a prototype. And I actually indented it here so you could flip the tabs and solder them. Um, you have to solder them. They use an electric welder, which I do have. And there's the prototype cover. But this will be the new cover, and when it's done, you'll have this nice little brick bomb, if you want to call it, for the Inspire. It works out to be 12,000 milliamp hours. All right. So when I'm all done, I take the wiring, the EV2300, and the, and the TRB software, and I'll calibrate the cells, and we'll see how it goes. I don't have a lot of time lately due to COVID and taking care of my mom and trying to just have a life. So I spend as much time on these as I can. Um, I got the I got the power heads in, so now it's just play. What I'll do with the secondary power head that's kind of half puffed here, I have a whole cell pack hanging around. I'll take it apart gently. I'll solder in the cell pack, and then you got to fix the BMS, and boom, it's going to be back to normal. And I'll have another TB48 to add to the collection. But I hope that helped a lot of people out with what I'm doing and tearing apart an Inspire battery. And this is Cruz Roy, and I'm out of here.